What's wrong with having a good relationship with Russia? What's wrong with Russia bombing the hell out of ISIS and these other crazy so that we don't have to spend a million dollars a bomb? Let them buy some of the bombs because that's what's happening. And I say, I can't believe these people. They want to do it themselves. We've been, we've been over there, Michael, for 15 years. 15 years we've been fighting over there, spending trillions and trillions of dollars. And so far we have nothing for it. If Russia wants to be friendly with us and wants to bomb the hell out of ISIS, I say that's great. We'll help them. Right. I understand. That's why I agree. with Even Bernie Sanders, by the way, said Russia should be our, our ally. And Hillary, again, like an idiot, says Hitler. It called him a Hitler number one six months ago. Putin now. And now she says we should. Russia's our enemy. In, in that, she agrees with Cruz that Russia's our enemy. Who's advising them? But let's move on. Yesterday was the Super Bowl. Were you in New Hampshire during the Super Bowl, Donald? Yes, I was here. Absolutely. I was did you here. have time? To, did you have time to watch the game? Not much of it. I'm here right now. Is at an event. Uh, I got to watch some of it. I thought it was a very boring game, actually. Thank you. And number two, the 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 event, the dancing in the middle, supporting the Black Panthers. I don't want to drag you into that one. There's an awful lot of complaints about that one. Why is Kasich uh, and Bush and why you know th these guys they can't win? Why are they still on the stage with you guys? I don't know. I don't understand Bush because he he's just. A stone cold a guy that that is just not going to make it. He's got no persona. Kasich has done a good job in Ohio. He got a little lucky with the oil, you know, they started fracking. But I give him credit because, frankly, in New York we should have started fracking. Would end up with no debt right now, but they fracked, and uh, Ohio is doing fine. But uh, I, I think Bush should not be on the stage. I agree with you. Spent 120 million dollars. Well, I think it's his mother pushing him, Barbara. She came out of the shadows last week. And she, she attacked you. But if it wasn't for Mama Bush pushing him, I think he would have dropped out. He looks like he doesn't have the heart for it anymore. Rubio. I mean, Rubio is a lightweight. You know that. He never belonged. He's not in the big boys club. Where they get this guy from? I don't know. But he, uh, I was standing next to him during the debate, and it was sort of a weird thing going on. And uh, I watched, and I said, well, wait a minute. He said that a minute ago, and then he said it again and again. I don't know what happened to him. And he's been very nice to me. I just don't know what happened to him. Donald, in a nutshell... When you are president, and I do hope you win the primary, because I think in a general election you have the greatest chance to beat Hillary if she's the nominee, Even though that, although that's not a, a guarantee anymore. Her own party's pulling away from her. What's going to happen if they force her to drop out? Sanders doesn't have a ghost of a chance to win. Do you think they'll pull up someone like uh, uh, Biden? I think they might, although I think it's hard because Sanders is doing pretty well against her. And I think it's going to be very hard politically for them to bring somebody up who's frankly, not done very well in the primary contest. You know, Biden has done very, very poorly over the years in primaries. He's run a number of times, and he's done very, very poorly. So I think it's going to be very hard to do that. I think it's going to be hard to take it away from Sanders if for some reason she doesn't run. Now, with that being said, she shouldn't run. She shouldn't be allowed to run, but I think the Democrats are protecting her. Well, as I say, I don't think she should be allowed to run because of so many scandals surrounding her. And frankly, she's not that appealing a candidate, even to the to the Democrats. So I don't think you have a big problem with her. Strangely enough, the old man, who I think that they went into the mausoleum in Moscow and used some kind of cloning to get Lenin back to life. Because what he's proposing is exactly what Vladimir Lenin would be pr proposing if he were alive today. I never heard anything like this. Well, when you pay twenty, when you pay ninety-five percent in tax, you'll understand it a little bit better. But I don't know; it's just hard. The whole thing is: could, did you ever think you'd be running against a socialist slash perhaps communist? And this is what we've come to. I mean, it's incredible. But he seems to be beating her. I see in a nationwide poll now, Michael, he's even with her all of a sudden. So I don't know. I know. What does that tell us about the the the, the general mentality of the electorate in the United States of America, Donald? That's the real problem. Well, the only the only suggestion I would make is every time you get hard, you go up. Every time you repeat your primary themes, you go up. Donald, please don't go soft because the advisors are telling you to go soft. They're 100 percent wrong. Going soft is wrong. The people need a strong alpha male leader. And I think you're the only one to win here. And I want to thank you for being with us on the Savage Nation. Good. And I'm glad you told me that. That was very nice. I, I, <laughs> I'm very glad you told me that. Thank you very much, Michael. You take care of yourself. I appreciate everything. Stay strong. Donald Trump back in a minute. He plays the guitar, I play the microphone. Imagine me in front of a stadium four times larger than AT&T Park. 
That's the number of people are listening to the show at any 15-minute interval. That's all. Take away. Walk away cocktail. So Donald Trump was on, and, and the takeaway message is, if we had a fair media, Savage says to Donald Trump, Savage says to Trump, don't go s soft, stay hard. That's a great interview. No one talks like that in the media. I do. That's why I'm the number one streaming show in talk radio. I'm sorry it's a hard pill to swallow. I am sorry. There are un other wonderful people in talk radio. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, let me tell you the truth. Streaming is a very interesting part of the radio business. It's not even on, on my own website. You hear this? R Ryan, could you dig up the story? It came out over the weekend last night. <clears throat> For the second year in a row, Michael Savage is number one in streaming. Why is that a big deal? It indicates that there's a large audience, primarily of younger people, the demo everyone wants, who love this show. TSL Power 50, congratulations to Michael Savage for his number one ranking in the TSL Power 50. His talk show, The Savage Nation, is the repeat Super Bowl champion of the TSL streaming talk universe. Savage scored substantial victories by wide margins over all other talk contenders in 2015. In fact, he did so in 2014. Thus, for the past two years, for eight consecutive quarters, Savage has blah, blah, blah. Number one, Michael Savage. Number two, Rush Limbaugh. Number three, Laura Ingram. Number five, Glenn Beck. Number six, Sean Hannity. Number seven, Tammy Bruce. That's their ratings. And they uh, reviewed six or nine million households, so to speak, with these devices. Keep dismissing it if you want. People say, ah, it doesn't mean anything. It's a small sample. What, six million is a small sample? Why? Because your favorite person isn't number one? If I am not for myself, who will be you? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. So I've been playing Metallica. Now I went back to Blue Monday. And um, if I tell you what I ate during the break and how fast I ate it, there's like a hot dog eating contest for me. You know, before I was in radio many years ago, I was a normal person. I'd have a lunch. I'd sit and eat a lunch over a 30-minute period, maybe 20, 30, top. I was never a sitter. I was never the type that could sit through a long meal, ever. I hated it. I would rather eat a sandwich in the street than, than sit down at a meal. But anyway, I learned that at a certain point in my life I had to sit and eat a meal. Once I started on radio, I stopped eating altogether during a show. For the first few years, I said, starve, see clearly, work tense, be on edge, get low blood sugar. I did that for years till I realized I'm not going to kill myself for radio. And recently, in the last few years, I eat during the show, as you know. Sometimes you can hear it, which is embarrassing. I get it. But I'm a human being. I'm not a robot. I just polished off from a Chinese restaurant, and I swore I wouldn't eat this garbage anymore. I sent my assistant out to a takeout. <laughs> what do they call that chicken thing, Ryan? I don't even know what it was. It was not like chicken wings, but it's some kind of sautéed chicken and then fried rice, then a pot sticker, then broccoli. You got the broccoli, so I feel good about it at the end of the day. And I ate the entire thing that would take a normal human being 20 minutes. I ate it in three minutes, and here I am. Now I've got energy to do the show for the rest of the day. Okay, let's go on to the other side of the aisle. Let's take some calls. By the way, you want to hear this, the message? Here is the message. Savage says to Trump, don't go weak, stay strong. That's a story. That is a story. Do you know anyone in the media who said that to him? I want you to raise your hand. Tell me anyone who would say that to Donald Trump. Mr. Trump, I have something to advise you. Don't go soft, stay hard. Did you hear what Donald Trump said to me? He didn't just walk off the stage. This man listens. And you know what he said? Thank you for the advice. Did you hear that one, Robert? He said that to me. Thank you for the advice. And you know what? He'll listen to me. I believe I'm right. And I'll ask you this question, my dear audience. Do you believe I'm right? Or do you think you should go softer in order to appeal to all the middle of the roaders out there? Maybe if Donald Trump was nicer, maybe he can get Mr. Rogers to appeal uh, to the crowd. He could bring Mr. Rogers out with balloons and candy and give it out to the crowd and not say that we're going to close the borders. He's going to, we might close the borders. We're not really going to close the borders. We want to unify the families. 
And Muslims are good. They're all good. Every one of them is good. All the Muslims that Obama's brought in are, are, don't need to be vetted because, you know, none of them will be terrorists. Is that what you want Trump to do? I don't. That's all. What did you think? ABC, Susan, fire away. You're on the Savage Nation. Yes. Um, I, I, Dr. Savage, I feel when Trump speaks to you, he feels relaxed. He feels that he has a listener that really hears him. And so when you speak to him, you get to his essence. And for this, I'm incredibly thankful, and I wish that you had more airtime so that people could hear. I listen very carefully to his tone. He's so honest. He's so right there. He is so absolutely saying the appropriate thing in a calm way, in an intelligent way, and it's because of the relationship that you two have. I believe this firmly. I, I hope that I, Listen to me. I only met him once in my life. You should know this. I only ran into him once in my life, and he was very cordial, as he is to almost anyone he meets. And I listened to him very carefully before I decided to back him because I think that we're in a high-stakes game for the survival of America. I believe national security is the primary issue for myself and everyone else in this country. Not I believe it. I know it to be true. And I think everything else will fall in place. And so I think he has the, the greatest chance of defeating Hillary or any of the other uh, Marxists that they may put up there. That's the reason that I support him. But getting back to the rapport we have, I think he trusts me, don't you? Did you hear what he said earlier in the interview? He said, Michael, you're very consistent. You haven't changed your positions in all these years. That's quite a statement. And he said, neither have I. You heard that one, right? Yeah, that, he's, he's not, that you're not going to look to trip him up, that you respect him and that you want to hear, but that you don't respect him 100% without any sense of the need to hold off any comments. Therefore, you said that. You said, don't give in. Don't uh, become a softie. I mean, not everybody would say that on the... Yeah, well, actually, that is a sort of criticism, isn't it? Because he has been getting softer over the last few um, campaigns to look different. And as a result, his poll numbers went down. He's let the, the advisors turn him into a softer candidate which uh, is wrong because the thing that distinguished him was that he was not a soft candidate, he was a hard candidate, and I say let the opposition go you know where. And it's a very warm place, that's where they all belong. They all ought to go there because that's where they all belong. I don't care about them. Look what they've done to this country. Look at the drug e epidemic. Look at the diseases from the rampant sexuality. Look at the insanity of our cultural meltdown, and look how weak we are in the world stage. I'm tired, soft doesn't work. Absolutely. And, I, and I, you know, as he got off the air, I was secretly hoping that you two had a rapport off the air and that you could send him emails and that he would respond to you and that you could be sort of a... Oh, well, I do. I do send emails when I think they're appropriate and they're not often, maybe one a week, an article that comes out that I think he should read. I don't bug him with, hi, Donald, you know, what are you eating or anything like that. If there's an article that comes out or I think someone's stabbing him in the back who he thinks is his friend, I will let him know that because he's mistaken about some people in the media who he thinks are on his side. But when he's not listening, they're putting him down. And the thing is, he needs to know that. He must know that. They need to be as upfront as I am with who I support and who I don't support. Okay? So anyway, I thought it was a, a fairly good interview. I didn't think that we broke tremendous new ground. But when I said to him, Donald, don't go soft, stay hard, I think he liked that, don't you? Absolutely. And he's also heard you say that we cannot look for a savior. And he understands that you get it, that you get that we're not looking for a savior, but we're looking for somebody who could shake this whole thing up because the stakes are that high. If we have a continuity of what's in place now, I believe we're finished. We are finished. And I have to be very honest. I grew up in, I won't call it the commie diaper thing that you've said, but I grew up in a typical upper middle class democratic Jewish home. And this guy in the White House has catapulted me to the other side. Absolutely catapulted me. Oh, so you were, you were raised in, with the uh, red diaper doper baby household. Just a nice middle of the road Democrat. They're good. Stay with the Democrats. Not the diaper baby. No. But, but, okay. But this, All right. So you weren't, you weren't a true commie. Your family wasn't, like, uh, sending you to a comic camp in the Poconos. I wish you well. Please stay with him. And, um, and what can I say? Well, thank I you. You've you got such a sweet voice. I just like listening to you. You calm me. That's why I'm keeping you on the phone. I like listening to you. You're calming me down after lunch. Uh, how, come you're so how come you're so nice? Well, uh, what can I tell you? I, I am pretty nice. I'm, I'm pretty strong, too. I've, I've, uh, 
I've been through a lot in my life, a huge, huge amount, and I think it's uh, it given me a certain level of compassion. But you've retained your femininity. That's the amazing part. You didn't become hardened by it. Oh, I try very hard. It's very important. I want to tell you, 